everyone. My name is Amit, uh, and uh, <clears throat> thank you very much for sparing time. Uh, and apologies for the delayed session. We were to start at uh, 2:45, but unfortunately, for some reasons, it got delayed. So, in next 45 minutes, uh, you know, we'll try and cover as much as possible about localization beyond text. And I understand some of you have already met me outside, looking at uh, potentially localizing your products. So, we are going to talk in detail what exactly localization process looks like. Right? Feel free to ask uh, questions in between, in thi you know, in case you have any sort of uh, queries. We'll, we'll try and make this more interactive as far as possible. So, what what do you guys think about uh, you know localization overall? In case uh, you have any idea about uh, this process, anybody can think about what localization is all about, the, the overall process, or just that we all want to go global immediately. Right. So, we, you know. Globalization is nothing but it's a subset of internationalization and uh, localization. So internationalization is the process uh, where you know the game developers uh, would code their products to be enabled to be you know uh, available in the internationalized market. So the codes are designed in a way where now it's available to accept a particular language, right, and different type of files. Where in the localization, it's, it's a process of adopting or translating the UI text of a game or a software. And it's typically done per locale, which is for a particular geography or particular region, right? And the globalization is nothing but it's a subset of internationalization and localization. Why do you think we need to localize uh, a game, text, any any reason? Crazy, maybe? Let's talk about the main reason. <laughs> well, let's have a look. So, of course, to reach the wider audience or indeed to make more money. That's, that's the prime reason for any, any business to localize the text, go global, reach the wider audience. And indeed, uh, it's not literally you know, just translating a text, but it takes a lot more in the entire process, which we will try and cover uh, in this next 45 minutes. So, uh, you know, a few questions that possibly you as a developer or a publisher would need to ask yourself uh, whether or not it is uh, beneficial. So you'll have to do a cost versus benefits of localization, right? Uh, what fractions of users speak that language, which we'll touch base in later slides that, you know, we'll try and cover top 10 languages of the world. Um, is the player, whosoever is already playing your game, is fluent in English, is something that you need to know because 99% of uh, the games that are being developed here in India are already made in English, right? Is my player already available or is he playing the game without knowing that language? It's, it's, these are the questions that you'll ask yourself before moving forward. Uh, often you would see or realize uh, these days, you know, as soon as you go on a Google or any other platform, for search or research, and you'll, you'll realize that you know there's a prompt that will come up. It would attempt you to uh, let you know that would you like to translate this page for free. Now this is usually uh, called as community translation, right? Wherein some random person who knows that language would just typically, you know, get on the keyboard and start translating the content, right? However. You know, he's not a professional linguist. All right, so uh, this slide talks about uh, the 10 most spoken languages in the world. And, uh, you know, to our surprise, there are certain Indian languages in this list. So let, let's have a quick look at them. Uh, the, the list is, you know, the, the number one position goes to Chinese Mandarin, uh, followed by Hindi. 
that's that's like a surprise to uh, quite of us but we are actually looking at native speakers of a particular language and uh, hindi is the second in the world most spoken language uh, followed by spanish english and arabic however there's a you know english for example is is not literally the number four language of the world however the reason is because you know most of us say for example in india or pakistan bangladesh we we are all we we we, we basically we are the guys who are you know uh, taking english as second language you know so for the regions like uh, most of the asia except barring china and uh, japan english is our second language which is actually spoken much more than hindi these days unfortunately that's a fact right followed by portuguese uh, sorry arabic portuguese bengali which possibly you know we might have not thought that bengali could be a part of uh, top 10 languages of the world but that's a fact uh, bengali is you know at number 7 currently followed by russian japanese and then punjabi punjabis are all over the world you know the half of canada is filled with them <clears throat> Uh, punjabis are in punjab and in uh, pakistan as well at the same time so uh, after looking at this slide do you think that any product that needs to go global uh, ideally should be translated in uh, any of these top lang uh, 10 languages that are most spoken in the world or that set could be different from these different for sure what do you think exactly exactly you you you're right but uh, the opinion here or you know the takeaway of this session is we uh, as a you know indian i would uh, i'm actually looking at something different so we'll we'll try and cover that at the later part of this uh, presentation so let's have a quick look at the you know countries who spends most on the games which makes more sense now to actually localize any of your product game software or it could be website in at least uh, you know chinese uh america of course they use english however there's uh, 30 or 40% of population of us which actually speak spanish which is from the mexico or latin so it's is the spanish version of latin america uh followed by japan germany and uk it's once again english then korea france canada spain and italy so th these are the recommended language you know ideally a product should be localized or a game should be localized to reach to the wider audience however i would again you know like to go back to the top 10 and then recommend here you know something uh, because you know for example uh, how many people here you know prefer uh, hollywood uh, versus bollywood so what's your preference between these two bollywood hollywood okay hollywood reason is graphics or it's because you connect very well with the artist performing the show stories you like aliens huh <laughs> okay sorry presentation is good of course uh, there are reasons and there are uh, you know differences which is why i guess uh, india has been um, more closely looked at like more influenced by the western world we guys are trying to wear the kind of clothes that they wear we try and speak their language and you know in that interim we are trying to forget hindi right absolutely so that's the boy i like to speak to you <laughs> so in bangladesh uh, there are you know people who would prefer actually watching movies in hindi uh, why am i touching base uh, in a gaming forum movies because uh, here you know you connect more with the artist uh, of people who are uh, performing salman khan versus uh, maybe any hollywood star i'm not a big hollywood fan maybe a tom alter or anybody right uh, within india people would possibly wants to connect more with salman khan rather than the other person around right you know and now imagine if you start actually making your games in hindi the kind of audience that we are looking at 
this is the language which is spoken second in the world which means we are talking about straight away capturing uh, 570 million native Hindi speakers. So imagine the kind of people that we are missing. So if you start uh, making products in any of these languages, this is eff you know, effectively going to uh, penetration and uh, you know, downloads of your game would definitely increase. Right? So these are otherwise the top 10 and recommended as of now. However, uh, my concern here is to see at least Hindi, Bengali, Punjabi, which is the most spoken languages, to actually you know, come back in this list in few years from now. Right? All right, let's, let's move forward. Say, for example, if you guys are a developer or a publisher and uh, now decided after looking at these two, you know, slides uh, which which talks about the spoken languages or actually the countries which spend the most money right uh, what exactly are we looking at uh, providing information to the localization company so that they can produce the exact localization content right uh, it's not you know just limited to share information on uh, the locale. It's, it's for example whether you want uh, a translation for Spanish Spain, whether you want to you know, uh, translate your content for uh, Spanish Mexico. These are two different dialects. Now for example uh, Hindi, it's, it's spoken here in Hyderabad as well. However in Delhi the dialect of Hindi is very different. Correct. So if you are targeting a particular region of, of a country Right. It's always recommended to specify not just the country, but what dialect of that country are you trying to target. It's, it's recommended to inform that information or pass on that information to your localization partners so that they can uh, produce the best of the content to their abilities. Right. Uh, why? The reason why isn't enough to specify just the language is because, you know, uh, each and every dialect have different uh, convention, spellings are different, the, the date time uh, formats are different, and their, uh, you know, currencies are different. So, for example, have a look at the uh, color, the spelling of color between uh, US or UK. So, in UK, we tend to draw, oh, sorry, in US, we tend to drop the U, right? Uh, localize is replaced with Z and S. Similarly, uh, an American would go on a vacation, right? A Britisher would prefer to go on a holiday. So these are, you know, some basic differences that you will see in dialects. Although the language essence still remains the same. At the end of the day, we are all talking English, right? And both countries understand their uh, language. <coughs> Sorry. Both countries understand their language, however, the, the spellings are different, the date and time formats are different, which is why it is recommended for any developer to start coding at the initial stage uh, wherein you are internationalized ready, so that now you can integrate the localized content, which is actually the UI content, you know, in your game at the, at the initial stage. So what are the differences between locales? Uh, let's have a pretty quick look at that. Uh, you know, we've just uh, touched base the spelling, which is color versus color. Uh, there are different slangs uh, between English US and English UK or uh, English, which is spoken in the Europe. That's uh, differences line versus Q, you know. Uh, in other parts of the world, the lines are usually called Q, wherein in uh, India, we, we are influenced by everyone, I guess. So we, we say either we are line, we are Q, Till the time we are studying English in school, I guess our teachers would try and say, stand in the queue, right? Wherein as soon as we are in the office, it's most of the time we are in lines, right? So number formats are different. Uh, you know, the telephone numbers, the way it's been displayed on your uh, phone screens are different. And how exactly this can be done, it's, it's the job of the developer. They'll have to code uh, in a way so that these formats are accepted by your product, by your game, right? Now, for example, the decimal separators is, is, is pretty different, uh, you know, the way it's being used in the UK or in Europe. 
we have uh, brackets and uh, you know separator and then we have uh, coma in in the entire europe versus uh, a period or a dot right the currency formats are different uh, we tend to write uh, the us dollar before the numbers and in europe we tend to write uh, the euro sign after the currency the date formats are different so uh, versus mmddyy to ddmm etc uh, the keyboard shortcuts are different uh, so if in case uh, you are developing a pc game your players are trying to play and their shortcuts are different so uh, you know possibly that's going to create a lot of bugs so it's recommended to you know keep the localization not as an afterthought code at the time when at the initial stage of uh, stages of development so that you are internationalized ready yep uh let's have a look at a quick slide uh, it's an example of a left oh, sorry right to left languages right uh, you know some of these languages which is which is arabic uh, farsi or persian right hebrew somalian so the way they write uh, we in english we try and you know write from left to right these languages write from you know starts from right to left which means uh you'll have to provide a separate dot uh, css files so that your game can accept you know these lang these languages in case you are planning to localize any of your product in these languages otherwise it is definitely going to create a lot of uh, bugs in future which is going to be really expensive to fix later yeah let's have a look at uh, some localization facts so uh, you know if if at all any of you have experienced uh, localization in in past uh, we're talking about you know usually german for example is uh, 30% longer than english right and it creates problem for developers because uh, either they have not thought about it earlier at the initial stage of uh, development and then it ends up creating a lot of bugs for them and the space provided uh, is is very less for german for example right so five things uh, you know a multilingual game or a content ideally or a typically should have is is fonts uh, especially for the languages that use uh, you know other scripts for example hindi arabic farsi so that's something which you need to keep in mind uh, the text box sizes uh, you'll have to adjust those text box sizes as per a uh, locale as per the language so that it fits in that provided space text point size it's nothing but uh, it it enables the text to fit in the available space right line spacing is for the visual appeal so that it's not cluttered or text should not overrun you know usually we see those bugs in our games or in any other product wherein the text actually overruns on the other part as soon as you trying to do a line break right now text styles uh, text styles uh, either can be used uh, the similar ones that's already existed or you create a new text styles when i say text styles text styles are nothing but uh, you know these are more oriented towards the local market when i say a local market that means the expressions and uh, you know the phrases are already used which is very different yeah for that particular region now we'll try and make uh, you know this presentation slightly more interesting at the later part of the day and uh, you know i would like to call upon few uh, guys from here as volunteer after this particular uh, slide right so as i mentioned you know please don't take localization lightly it cannot be an afterthought and the reasons are very prominent by the time uh, you guys take a decision of localizing your uh, content or your game for any other market uh, you know there is a high possibility that somebody in that region is already cloning your game right so that's the risk that you are taking if in case uh, you decide to take that step at a later part of your development not just that uh, if you decide to take that step later it will definitely going to be much more expensive uh, to get that localization done because you'll have to create your uh, you know uh, translation assets from scratch once again 
right? Now, how to fix? It's of course I've just uh, covered that already. Try to code your game well in advance so that it's internationalized, uh, accepted, right? And is ready to accept the other languages of the world, wherever you are trying to reach. All right. So how are internationalization or localization done? Uh, it's a very fairly simple process that we are actually going to look at, so we are definitely not getting into detail or the technical side of it. Uh, the first thing is the developer who writes the code for an app or for a game, wherein you guys pull a string out of a code, you know, use a separate resource file, and then it, it ensures that it's now ready to accept those formats, those numbers, those currency signs, and uh, it's all ready to accept the other languages right a localizer who's a localizer's job is to you know translate from one language to another right uh, for a particular region is that's the job of a localization or a localization company Let's have a look at uh, risk of poor localization. Do we have any victims of poor localization in this room that, you know, uh, we've done the localization in past and now we realize that, you know, it's, I see one smiling face there. Yeah, you, okay. So, word okay could be translated as so-so or mediocre. Uh, you know, the inverted commas that we typically use in English is replaced with these uh, brackets in some other languages. So we have to take care of all these things. So the coder would have to keep all of these things in mind before uh, you know, saying that, yes, we are ready to go global, right? Uh, a product name could be translated poorly. So for example, Microsoft Bing can translate to disease in Chinese if at all you try to go uh, to, you know, use Google Translate or maybe a Babel Fish kind of a thing, right, Fezzi? <laughs> okay, yeah. So we definitely have few people who've experienced this in past, uh, you know, or else why, again, it's not recommended to use machine translation is because, uh, you know, another example is an online dating site that allow user under 16 to register could actually offense a lot many other, you know, people in that particular region. Now, most part of the world uh, would allow, I think, uh, 18 years and above to drink, except India. You need to be 25, right? If, if your product or your website states something different, because now the content, the source content only reads uh, alcohol is available for person above 18 is definitely not being uh, accepted here in India. So somebody from India really need to read that content, change that from English to Hindi. You're getting what I'm saying, right? So now I need a volunteer, uh, and I would actually call upon the lady who's, uh, you know, experienced the uh, poorly localized uh, in, in past. Would you mind, uh, can, can we get a mic for her? I would want you to read, uh, you know, a few few phrases for us. Drop your pants here for best results. Are you serious? <laughs> wow. We take and your that's from the dry cleaning company Tokyo. <laughs> okay. We take your bags and send them in all directions. <laughs> they are superstar. <laughs> cool. Ladies may have a fit upstairs. Yeah, that's a dry cleaning company in <laughs> Bangkok. You know, so you, you can imagine how is it going with them. All right. Let's move forward. Teeth extracted by latest Methodists. Who wants to go there? <laughs> Please leave your values at the front desk. Are we sure? <laughs> okay. No smoothen the lion. No smoothen the lion. We find them all in Czech Zoo. <laughs> okay. If you consider our help impolite, you should see the manager. <laughs> Where's the manager here? <laughs> All right. Our wines leave you nothing to hope for. <laughs> These are some examples, some classic example of machine translation. Now, you know, I'm sure, uh, how many developers in the room right now who are working on games? Okay, great. 
So, how many months or years have you spent in making the game? Wherever, whatever stage it is. One month, six months, a year. Three months, that's it, small game, mobile. Okay, anybody with a bigger game? How many years? One and a half years. Two, four and a half years. You're working on one product. Wow. Would you prefer uh, to, you know, this game is played by somebody else or would you prefer, you know, you play with your game? With machine translation risk. Would you want to do that? For sure. Please, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's my friendly advice. Don't play with your game. Let others do the job and uh, do what you guys are best at, right? Okay, so would you want to read the few more lines? Of course, we have ample time. We regret that uh, you will be unbearable when passenger of foot heave in sight, tootle the horn, trumpet him melodiously at first. But if if he still obstacles you, then tootle what him. Are you reading? Bigger. You don't know English. I don't know. I'm sure you you definitely <laughs> don't. So guys, th these are some examples of poorly localized messages uh, across the globe. Um, that's how and how bad it could go. And I'm sure you don't want to risk your product, your game, you know, leaving them on machine translation, right? Another example of automated translation. Uh, this text is, you know, it's a random text that I picked up. It's been translated from English to Chinese and from Chinese back to English. Uh, can anybody do me a favor by reading this paragraph? Maybe again, you, you've got a nice voice. There is no textbook, but there will be reading assignments throughout the quarter that will be posted to the course website to print or read online. For many of the reading assignments, we will assign questions posted online for you to answer about the reading. Yeah. You will submit your answers to these questions online. These will be part of your course grade and will not be accepted late. Perfect. It makes sense, right? Why? Because it's written in English. Let's look at the version which is being translated to Chinese by Babelfish, which is actually nothing as, uh, as good as it's a Google Translate tool, uh, then back to English. Now, would you want to read that again? Without the textbook, but will have, will be posted to the root website in online printing or reads in quarter reading assignment. For many reading assignments, read assignment problem online will post for you. Can reply. Nobody is actually passing this test, <laughs> no. right? Because we've lost the meaning in, you know, th this is a very famous quote uh, from across the globe as soon as you, you know, start talking to a translators of different languages. Uh, bridging language barriers or adapting and refining uh, messaging. What do you guys think, uh, you know, how important is it to culturally adopt the game? You know, if you're making a game uh, targeting Indian markets or a Western market, for example. Let's have a look, you know, a few of the things that you might have to change when you're looking at, uh, you know, localizing your content. Uh, the colors, the shapes, the size, and I'm talking about, you know, character designing, uh, the text box sizes, the images, the icons, the graphics that you use in your game. Till the time it is not culturally, you know, uh, localized well, that game or that product may not do pretty well in that market. The classic example is uh, the West versus Japan. If you go with your products uh, in your current states in Japan, people of Japan may not want to accept it, right? Uh, because, uh, you know, the humor, the etiquettes, rituals, their symbols, everything is different. They are a different world completely, right? Their values are different, uh, their relationships are different, which is another reason. And of course, you know, we're not leaving that functional content, you know, the date, the time format that we covered in, uh, you know, from previous slides is also different, right? Which is why it's, it's highly recommended to always choose your localization partner wisely Ask them questions around, uh, you know, if, if they have experience in gaming or not. Uh, what sort of genres have they, you know, translated and passed? 
what sort of games have they translated in past and uh, whether or not they have an experience in that particular genre what you are creating end of the day it's your game <clears throat> it's your product and I'm sure you don't want to play with it as we talked about right so everything is different you know from a date time telephone numbers contact information the weight measurements uh, geographical references languages linguistic content everything differs as soon as you move you know let's not go far away let's talk about UP within UP as soon as you jump from one state you know one city to another another town or a village the dialect of Hindi would differ right every time the dialect of Hindi would differ so imagine the world is huge and we have different dialects for each language uh, so we are finishing on time and we we'll leave about 10 odd minutes uh, for the Q&A after this slide. This is an example of a game art change around the West versus Japan. Have a look at the same game, however the design, the pattern of uh, you know, the product uh, box is completely different for the US market versus Japan. You know, which is why we say you know in case you want to go to Japan ever for take your product to Japan ever please make sure that you are contacting or at least you know uh, taking that source information from the Japanese to understand you know why there is a difference you know for example I'm not sure how many of you've seen that video but uh, there, there is uh, a famous video which has been out on WhatsApp uh, pretty recently the school boys are trying to you know cross the hurdle and this this poor small chap has not been able to jump right so in in Japanese culture the entire population of that school or that particular class would now encourage that boy to cross that hurdle imagine the same situation here in India is definitely going to be a laughter for that child it is not same you know they believe in teamwork and we believe in individuality so please ensure and please uh, you know keep this in mind uh, when you are trying to take your product in the international market that we represent India and we have to be bug free yeah time for questions in case you guys have any please feel free to any local translator and uh, how do we make sure that it's not uh, an academic translation but like a translation that people are able to understand the local people okay. unqualified people are able to understand it right how do I make sure it's not an academic translation well, there are certain tools available in the market uh, which performs these type of QA checks uh, which which does not literally required uh, a person to know that particular language now for example uh, you know when you say you provide your text to to somebody uh, locally say whatever language now you don't read that language so there are tools available in the market uh, like XTM and MemoQ which are actually used to translate now these are not the tools which will produce the translation by itself they are not a machine translation tool a human would have to get onto it and translate it now with your game I'm sure if you give them enough time to familiarize uh, with your product right uh, let them play you know we have to keep that budget in mind uh, for them so that they actually eventually start playing your game uh, for at least an hour or two to understand the game and if they are not asking you enough questions means there is something tricky about it uh, it's always recommended to not just get your text translated but you know ensure that the process involves a translation editing and proofreading which is done by a second linguist and which is why I say choose your you know translator wisely it's uh, as a you know for a small company I would say it's much recommended to use an agency rather than uh, individual translator whom you definitely have no idea about what he's done in past or not right wherein company can still take that ownership of 
their delivery. If at all there is anything wrong in the tech's delivery, they, they are always there to back up and provide solutions at a later stage. Where an ind individual translator may not be able to help you at a later date. Yeah? We have a voiceover. So do you recommend, so let's say we have some messages regarding to that vo voiceover. So I can able to translate the text. Uh, do you recommend any tools to translate the voiceover thing? A voiceover, uh, as in, you have the text ready which is to be read or uh, have you, which language is it? It's, it's in English only. It's in English only. Yeah. And it, it's, uh, what do you want to do with that? So I wanted to translate the voice as well. Okay, so, so do you as of now it is the text, of course. Yeah. So, so you, what you actually need is the voiceover artist to, to do the job, right? Yeah, so why, uh, what I, my question was like, uh, voiceover is in English. Yeah. And the text related to that voiceover, we are translating it. So, so which language are you translating that in? It's localized. So it's which, which language? Localized in which language? Let's say Spanish. Okay, yeah. So there are many Spanish speakers, there are many Spanish artists. Um, you know, we can, we are at booth eight, so I can help you with that question. Ah, sure. Yeah. So yes, there are things available. There aren't any tools for that. It's a job which has to be done by a human. No machine would actually just read your text from English to Spanish. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you need a human to do the job. There are tools available, some nice mic and good, uh, you know, audio visuals to track it. That's about it. No, actually, like uh, for our game called Trexels, we used uh, Judge Takai for voiceover. So I wanted to translate that text so that uh, in other countries mm -hmm. we can release the game with or with that voice. The voiceover is it's only recommended to do with human. I I am not aware of any tool which uh, converts the text from English to any other language. Yeah. <laughs> it, and, and trust me, again, saving money on top of letting other people play with your game or you want to play with your game. <laughs> so don't, don't do that. So we have discussed yesterday. Yep. So uh, we are using a lot of you know, pure medical terms. So if we are localizing our game in, say, suppose in Chinese and Spanish, right. then how would we be able to you know, localize it? translate the pure medical terms do we have to i mean hire the doctors or something Perfect. like that it's it's the game or trying to play with those medical terms it could go anywhere uh, so the recommendation here is choose your vendor wisely as i said uh, ask the person or the company questions do you guys have experience in serious gaming or uh, you know somebody who's done a medical translations in past this translator who is actually a professional linguist by profession this person has to be a doctor, you know, or somebody who, who knows the medical terminology from the pharmaceutical world. So your person, you know, it's, it's, it's like a combination of, uh, you know, somebody who knows medical, but he's a gamer by, by heart. You know, that's like the best combination that I can figure out or think about. It's, it's a rare combination to find because these, you know, doctors are really studious and gamers definitely not right so difficult to find uh, but they are available in the market so something called transliterate then we don't translate every time right uh, it's typically it's uh, you know decided by the developer who's actually designing or uh, developing the game uh, the content has to come from there however as soon as you provide the source you know text to the translators and say for example if I'm a Delhiite and you know uh, the Hindi is different from you know Hyderabad versus Delhi uh, there are certain phrases that are only being used in Delhi right within Hindi Similarly, that German would know this term either has to be kept in English or I need to translate trade but not translate. That means still use the Roman characters, leave it in English or use, you know, abbreviation for that which suits that particular locale. That's why we are not talking about doing or going towards machine translation, you know. Use humans, they will definitely give you some input. And if they are not, 
they may be end up using the machines in the background. So you need to be watchful about it. They actually love that you're uh, promoting games be translated into Indian languages. Yep. <laughs> so cool. Uh, are there actual pro professional services already who are providing services to translate into Indian languages? Yes, in we do that. that. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, Good we term. do that. We, we okay. you know. Uh, so it's not uh, very uncommon. It's already like at least the the mini services clip exist. I'm, I'm sure you guys are familiar with Miniclip. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we we've, we've done a lot of translations for Miniclip uh, as a mobile gaming. Okay. There are, um, you know, we've done a lot of work for Disney in mm -hmm. past. Okay. In fact, uh, most of the Disney titles used to go through my hand about like three years ago. Okay. And uh, yes, the, the games are not just translated in Hindi, but uh, quite a few Indian languages now. Right. right? Uh, specifically, you know, there are games uh, on mobile platform, which is uh, being, you know, used or played in the tier two cities are currently being localized and we have good translators available mm -hmm. who whose gamers and uh, some of them have been attracted very recently to join Facebook in California oh, well. <laughs> so you can imagine the the growth it's it's definitely growing and going okay. it's pretty cool thanks yeah. thank you question I think are we done no more questions yeah I'm leaving some time for the next person to prepare you know and understand <laughs> the, his audience should not go anywhere else now oh, no. I think this was the last uh, session anyway so oh, cool. for the day perfect stuff cool. so I think all right done. guys thank you so much uh, you want to read through this you know thank you being written in different languages I don't know how to pronounce most of them though apart from thank you and danke thanks okay.